Stan Van Gundy reacting to the Luke Walton situation. The Pistons have an ESPN game coming up on January 19th against the Wizards. Van Gundy told the Detroit Free Press here. Ironic. Quote. The free Press, huh? I'm not meeting with their announcing crew before the game. I'm not going to do the in-game interview. I'm not going to participate in the thing. Van Gundy says he views this as, quote, extra access. He thought it was no longer deserved since ESPN reported LeVar Ball's comments on Luke Walton. And he says Luke Walton was shown, quote, little respect. What you got? I'm stretching here. To to go in. All right. So first and foremost, you said it. A lot of people have said it. Luke Walton's a big boy. He doesn't need all these people coming in with their capes out like, I shall save and, <laughs> and be here for Luke. Luke can handle himself and has handled himself very well. So well. Number two, Stan Van Gundy, you're not going to give us access? Oh, no. But the entire world wants to know about the Pistons and what's happening with them. Number three, when he says the access is for... Extra. Is extra, basically. No, no, no. It's not extra. You see that pie chart right there? See, BRI is called Basketball Related Income. That's all the money that the NBA makes from TV deals and, and uh, merchandise and ticket sales and all that. Our money here at ESPN alone accounts for about roughly 20%. That's 1.4 billion. The teams get this money and they're free to spend it any which way they want, whether it's on players or on coaches. So 20% of your contract, Stan Van Gundy, you signed a five-year $35 million contract, is $7 million. If you don't like ESPN, the access we're paying for, that, that's where that $7 million is coming from. <laughs> it's not extra. You're not doing us a favor, especially not when you're coaching the Detroit Pistons. Okay, okay. Like, come on, man. Who are you? <laughs> Wait, are you? Oh, no. We're shaking in our boots. We can't cover the Pistons fully anymore because you're going to give us those quarter break interviews that are so insightful. We've got to do better. We've got we to stop them in transition. Oh, geez, what are we going to do now? You know, Stan is hating a little, little bit. Come on, man. Uh, you know, you look at the Lakers. They're one of the worst teams in the league. You get the Pistons. They're in the playoffs. So he's hating a little bit. They're not getting any attention. No they're shine. They're not getting any ESPN games. But, hey, win some more games. Get to the top. And things will get a little bit coach better. Coach your team. But okay. Stop, stop, stop. Coach your team. I don't think you have to get so personal because I don't like that we pay your salary. But we, the, but no, no, but Rachel, no. when he says, There's when he says that extra well, access. That's different. That's that's different. what, that's what, I'm, okay. I'm, that's what so I'm addressing. I don't get into the, oh, we pay your salary because like that, get whatever. I do think your point though about, look, and I made this point yesterday on the show, it's not extra access. It is contracted yeah. access yes, that we contractually pay for. In return for us and TNT, it's $24 billion. It's, it's, it's a lot wow. of money. Rachel. So it's not extra access. And I guess this is what I meant at the beginning of, hey, you go too far. I think a lot of people feel the way Rick Carlisle feels, the way Stan Van Gundy feels. There are people at this network, and I said it yesterday, I would not have sent a reporter to Lithuania, but I don't run the network, and that's probably a good thing. But the point is, if you go so much further, you lose the support of a lot of people who agree with you. And Stan Van Gundy is someone who has attacked politicians all fall for, hey, you're fighting freedom of the press and you're yeah. not letting people have a free exchange of ideas. You don't say, hey, this news outlet so, did something I don't like. I'm going to pull your credentials and your access. You can't right. have it both ways. And, and Rick Carlisle kind of said the same kind of stuff where it's the idea is that we do this so that you guys should be nice to us. I mean, that sounds like Pravda to me. That sounds like, like that's, that's, look, I come from a country where the press can't write what it wants to write. I come from Sudan, where if you write something untoward, even mildly so, you can be arrested, you can be in prison, you can be even killed, and no one knows. So it, it's a small thing. I know LeVar Ball is not the greater geopolitical uh, landscape that we live in right now, but I think there's a big problem when people have a, like, they say our recourse for bad stories written about us is to control it, to suffocate it, to stifle it. That's not right. I don't know, and I'm not, I think LeVar is out of his mind. I, that's the worst part. I hate that I'm defending him, but I'm not defending him. I'm defending the freedom of press. Right, right. right. And, and that's an issue. And look, uh, you know, we're, we're not going to bother to play the bite. You can find it online. But Steve Kerr had a more sort of nuanced, reasoned, nuanced, nuanced response yep. talking about, hey, our society as a whole is rewarding sort of sensationalism. Sure. And he made the point. He said it's ESPN, but it's not just ESPN. And, and I would argue, actually, LeVar Ball has a bigger platform on Facebook. Facebook is a much bigger company than Mark Zuckerberg ESPN. Zuckerberg don't catch any of that They're heat. They're reach. They're everything else. And they have a show on Facebook. So Steve's right. It, it's a larger problem that and, you can take a larger And Mark Zuckerberg doesn't kick into your salary, by the way.